Hello everyone and welcome to a Glassnode market update for the 14th of January. And what we are looking at today is whether Bitcoin is back from the dead. We've seen it rally from about $16,500 to $21,000 in just a handful of days. Um, and uh, Bitcoin tends to do this uh, on occasion. It likes to just really make a move and uh, it does turn heads. So uh, what we're going to do is actually cover a really, really interesting um, set of dashboards today. This is actually a new way that we've been presenting some of our data. So this is actually the first time we'll be showing you this, uh, but it does support a new dashboard type that we've rolled out. So uh, as always, please do give us some feedback and comments. It really does help us, particularly with a product like this, which is really targeted at helping people understand where we've got confluence. And this is a really, really important topic, which we'll talk about in more detail. So as I mentioned, Bitcoin's had a pretty impressive rally. We've seen it really regain most of the ground that it lost uh, following the FTX disaster. Now, whilst this is a you know very, very nice uh, relief uh, to such a painful 2022 bear market, we also need to just keep ourselves grounded and looking at the fundamental data because the reality is that nothing moves in a straight line. Um, it is very, very improbable that Bitcoin's at an all-time high when we wake up tomorrow. So really what we're trying to do here with this particular set of tools is break up many of the concepts that you've heard me talk about on these videos and really isolate it down to a couple of key topics. And really what we're doing here is trying to distill much of what on-chain analytics is. A lot of people you know, get confused with all the different metrics and all the different tools. What we're really trying to do with this particular set of dashboards and using our current market structure as a case study we're going to break it down to just four simple topics with each of those topics containing two metrics that we're looking at. And what we're really looking for is confluence. Confluence is really, really important because there is no single silver bullet. There is no one metric that will tell you the answer. What you look for is many metrics across many different facets of the fundamentals of the market and try to look for when they are all telling you the same story. We're looking for consistency across the board. So these tools are really designed to help you give a leg up and understand how to put these four topics in play and look for confluence across many layers of on-chain analytics. So we're gonna look at four different topics. We're gonna to look at the key pricing models that have psychological significance. We're gonna look at on-chain activity as a gauge for network usage. We're gonna look at profitability. We wanna see that the market has the ability to absorb profit taking rather than a bear market where it's all losses. We wanna see that transition back towards a more profitable state. And we also want to see supply dynamics indicate a favorable balance of wealth. Generally speaking, at late stage bear markets, you need to be a pretty high conviction to, to stick around. Um, and we flush out all the speculators and people who just came for the upwards price. So you get this return back towards a hodler driven base. And then as the bull market occurs, that starts to transition back. Now, with all this as context, what we are trying to assess, the question at the top of all of this is how do we navigate the late stage of a Bitcoin bear market. Because the reality is that even with these green candles, we don't know how this bear market is gonna play out. It may be over, it may well not be. But what we're trying to do here is answer the question, is the bear market over? And if it is or isn't, what are the tools that we can use to really have some confidence in that decision? So that's what we're gonna look at today. And I really do hope that you enjoy this particular dashboard. And as always, please give me feedback on this. You will find a description to this dashboard in the description below. Please do check it out. Um, you will have to be an advanced member to actually take advantage of all of these, uh, these particular models, um, but certainly we will cover all of these in this video so you can get a snapshot into what is actually within that dashboard. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are in the recovering from a Bitcoin bear dashboard. Now, for those of you who are an advanced member, you will find this one located under signals on the left-hand side pane, recovering from a Bitcoin bear. As I mentioned, this one will be locked only for advanced and pro members. Um, but if you are actually just joining Glassnode or this is kind of the first video that you're checking out, please do be sure to check it out and actually come across. And as always, you can ask me any questions in the, just in the comment section below. So what is this funky looking chart that we have here? Well, I spoke about those different topics that we're looking for and what we've got covered here and each one represents a different color. So what we're looking for down the bottom is a bar that's basically showing when pricing models in green are telling us that both of the metrics in that category are thumbs up. They're telling us something about the health of the current market. So we're gonna be looking at pricing models in green. We're gonna be looking at network utility or the on-chain activity side, how active is the network in yellow. 
we're going to be looking at market profitability. So we want to see it transition from a realized loss regime where people bought the top and they're exiting at the bottom. We want to see that start to transition back to profits. That will be shown in blue. And in red, we're going to be looking at the balance of wealth. We want to see a very strong hodler base, but simultaneously, much the same as we see profitability returning, the reality of bull markets and the actual return of market strength is that hodlers have a pretty good gauge on Bitcoin and the market trend. So what you see is the wealth at the bottom of the bear is typically heavily concentrated towards hodlers. And as the bull market plays out from here until wherever this thing goes, that's when you start to see hodlers actually transferring their wealth to newer buyers. This is the cycle that we just continue to see play out over and over in on-chain analytics. Now, what you can see here is that we've got these blue and dark blue pricing bands. What these are actually modeling out is how many of those eight signals, the black line down the bottom here will tell you how many of those eight signals are, have passed the threshold that we're looking for. The light blue will show you when five of eight, more than 50% of those metrics are actually firing. And when we have all eight of them, it will turn dark blue. And as you can see, what this particular set of models does, it's not looking for the absolute Pico bottom because finding Pico bottoms is just a fool's errand. It is just an impossible task. People have been trying to do it forever. What we're looking for is where do we have confluence across many different metrics? And we're trying to look for those elements where across all of these four fundamental sets, where do we have thumbs up? So as you can see, what we're looking for, it tends to get very, very overheated towards late stage bull markets. So when you start seeing these tops here in 2013, you will see all of these things firing. And for most people, that's very exciting. The euphoria kicks in. But for those of you who are really trying to think about this one step ahead, those dark blue zones are actually periods of time where it's starting to get a bit overheated. So you can start thinking about this from both sides of the equation. Nevertheless, this particular set of models, what we are looking for specifically in terms of the question we're answering is what does it look like to recover from a Bitcoin bear? And as a result, what are the things that we want to see that would give us a bit of a thumbs up saying that maybe the, tra the trend is a little bit healthier? So let's get kicked into it. So starting with our green bar, what we're looking for here is pricing models. Now, these are fairly simple. These are very, very basic models to just look for where has Bitcoin been in a stronger trend. So there are two models that we have here. The first one is the realized price, which is the on-chain cost basis of the market. The reason that we use this is through every single bear market we've seen, including March 2020 and even our current one, we have spent some time below the realized price. This is the average price at which every Bitcoin in the supply last moved. And what we're looking at there is basically the aggregate cost basis. So when, the, when price is actually below that level, the average Bitcoin holder is underwater on their holdings. And by the way, when we're underneath this, it actually means that all the tremendous profits from Satoshi and the early miners have been erased. So it's actually a little bit nastier than that, quite, quite impressively. Now, the second one is just the 200-day moving average. Why? Well, because for most analysts in all, whether you're traditional finance or you're in on-chain analytics or you're in technical analysis, the 200-day moving average is a widely observed model. And more importantly, it's often used to distinguish bull versus bear. So what we're doing here is just giving a very, very simple framework. Is price, it will turn green, is price above both of those models. If so, this bar will turn green. When it's below at least one of them, it will turn blank. So we're really looking for that high conviction, confident signal. Are we above both of these models that are widely observed in the world of Bitcoin and traditional and technical analysis? Are we above both of these models? Now, what's quite exciting about our current market structure and the reason why the video is actually framed today is we've got our first green bar. In our rally at the moment, you can see here that the 200 day and the realized price are pretty much sitting on top of each other, sitting here around 19,500 to 19,700. So given that we pushed up over 21,000 today, it's the first time that we've seen both of these models fire off at the same time. So it's really time to start paying attention. We've just got two of those models that have triggered off. Now, remember, we can have periods where these things fire off and then it pulls back. So we're really looking for that confirmation and that's why we don't just use this model. We have a whole bunch more that try to provide those extra layers of confidence all the way down. So we're now gonna move into the on-chain activity space. This is what we represent in yellow. And these metrics are looking for when is the network alive? When are we seeing more users coming in, more transaction activity, more fee pressure? 
So the first one, you've seen me talk about this in several of our videos before, the new address momentum. What we're looking for here in the red is the monthly activity on chain more than the yearly. So the yearly is our long-term baseline. Do we have an uptick in our monthly activity? Short-term, is it more active than the yearly baseline? Now, following FTX, we did have a burst of activity and we've seen this really hold above the yearly. So we have got a yellow signal on this particular metric. The thing to be careful of is we can see these kind of false starts where it comes up and then breaks down back below. So whilst we do have that first leg higher, we, we've kind of got to watch this thing and make sure it doesn't pull that back down below because if the chain goes even more quiet, that could start to signal it may not be so healthy. If on the other hand, it manages to maintain it as it did through 2019, note that the bear market continued in 2019, but the overall long-term trend was that we had more activity than not. The network was still growing despite the fact that price wasn't reflecting it. So it gives you a view on the fundamental side of the equation. Now, we also have our fee revenue momentum. So the same concept applies here, but what we're looking at it is from the fee pressure in the actual demand for block space. So whilst activity in terms of the overall addresses may be picking up, do we actually have full blocks, fee pressure and congestion on chain? Now this thing here down the bottom will signal a blue curve when we do not, when the bl blocks are relatively empty and we're not seeing that much congestion on chain, this thing will be blue and we will not have a yellow signal. And that is our current state. Fee pressure at the moment is fairly lackluster. We have not seen that influx of congestion. However, this model tends to show up just a little bit later. You can see here in 2019, um, it was somewhat later to the trend. And you can see here again, only after March 2020, and we'd recovered back to our pre-collapse levels, did the fee pressure really start to rise. Nevertheless, the fees provide us that much more high conviction. Blocks are now full on a sustained basis, and we're seeing that fee pressure increase. So really, when you combine new address momentum, and fee revenue, you really have a high conviction signal that both of those things are firing. At the moment, we only have the one new address momentum. So now we're gonna move into the profitability standpoint. Now, why profitability matters is essentially how many people have you ever heard come to you and say, gee, I lost all this money, I'm having a great time. Everything I'm buying is going down, it's fantastic, I love this asset, pretty uncommon. Conversely, when people start to actually, when there's a, the enough demand flowing in and assets actually do move into bull markets, people are capable of realizing profits. And then when they realize profits, they tend to tell their friends, hey, I realized profits. And people start to, word of mouth generally spreads. Um, it's generally actually quite the opposite during a bear market, as some of you may have noticed over recent months. So what we have here is the ASOPA model. So ASOPA on a 30-day moving average. So what you can really see here is that it tends to trade below one for the vast majority of a bear market. So what we're looking at here is a the ability of the market to spend coins. It doesn't care about transaction volume. This is an important element here. The A super model here does not care about transaction volume. It only cares about how profitable the coin was or the UTXO was. Why this is important is because whales and shrimp are on the same footing when it comes to this model because we're not counting coin volume. That comes in our realized P&L ratio. Here, we're looking at a wide cross-section of the market. You're a shrimp and you've spent $100 on chain You have the, and realized 10% profit. You have the exact same impact as a whale who moved 1,000 BTC at 10% profit. So what we want to see on a 30-day moving average, 30 days to give it that longer-term, higher conviction. Remember, we're looking for a high-confidence return. We're not looking for bottoms. We're not doing any of that. What we're looking for is, is the trend strong and healthy over the long term? And generally speaking, this model starts to tick back above into positive one, more than one territory during the early phase of proper high conviction bull markets. You can see 2019, we oscillated around it for a while. And after the COVID collapse, we finally got that upside momentum. Now, this model, we have not broken back above one yet. We've started to see SOPA on smaller timeframes ticking back above one, but we have not seen it on the 30-day moving average. So if this is a positive trend and this really does start to get some momentum, this will eventually start to tick higher. If it doesn't, this gives us a nice grounding anchor so we don't get too pulled into all the hype and the euphoria. We can use the data to say, is the trend really telling us that this has momentum 
or is it a bit of a flash in the pan? So this is a nice one to kind of ground you because it's nice and slow. It will actually take a bit of time to actually trigger, but when it does, it's generally a higher conviction signal. Now on a very similar concept, but really here we're looking at the actual volume. So now whales and those larger entities moving more funds will have a larger impact than the shrimps. The realized PL ratio basically takes the ratio of realized profit in USD terms to realized loss. Now it will break above this black line here and be above one when there are more profits than losses. And like SOPA, you can see that we generally, for most of the bear market, spend time below one. But when we break above and hold it, it's generally synonymous with a more full scale bull market. You can see here again, we broke above it in 2019, but that rapidly fell back off. As we pulled out from that 14K high, we saw a large scale pullback. Now, what you can see here is this is also on a 30 day moving average for the exact same reason. And you can see that we are still hovering down here by the lows. And the same as SOPA, we've seen some shorter term uptick but we haven't yet got that fully confirmed uptrend in this particular model. So at the moment, neither of our profitability models in blue have fired off and noting that these are really powerful at helping ground us in that longer term trend is to help us really understand what's going on at a profit standpoint and with that longer term view in hand. So now moving on to our fourth topic, what we are looking at here is supply dynamics. Now, when I talk about supply dynamics, it's generally about who owns what coins and when. We often combine this with tools like the HODL waves, um, looking at um, lifespan metrics. How long has the coin supply been dormant? How many holders who have held their coins for a long time are there? So the R HODL multiple is based off the R HODL ratio. Some of you may remember that the R HODL ratio is a tool that helps us track the very, very young coins, younger than one week versus the one to two year old coins. One to two year are much closer to HODLers and the one week old coins are really those really hot coins that are on the move. So at the bottom of bear markets, what we see is this metric will trend down to a very, very low level. This indicates, you can see here on the left, we have some guidance. Very low levels indicate that there is a dominance of one to two year old coins. It essentially means the wealth has transferred back towards the hodlers. They own a dominant majority of the coin supply. As you can also expect, higher values indicate that there's a dominance of one week old coins. How do they become one week? Because these one to two year old hodlers sold their coins to somebody else who's brand new. So these market peaks we see have a very high oscillator value and during bear markets we reach very low values. And as you can see, really since June last year, we have been in this very, very low range that has historically been associated with bear markets. Now, what's important here is we actually wanna see this starting to uptrend over a 90 day period. Why is this? Well, hodlers, because they've weathered such a serious storm, they also have done their homework. They tend to understand Bitcoin, the market structure, the mechanics, just that little bit better. It takes a bit of grit to survive a bear market. So what we actually wanna see is that very, very low level get hit, but this model will turn pink and signal that there is actually a healthy trend when those hodlers are able to spend their coins, transfer some of that wealth back to new buyers, which signifies that there is an influx of new demand those hodlers are able to realize profits. And what we're seeing is they have the conviction to actually start to spend. And remember, this can also go both ways. You could also just have them trying to seek exit liquidity. But simultaneously, these folks, if they're sticking around through all of this bear market, Bitcoin has this amazing property where people just, they understand it and they spend hours and hours of their life every day trying to appreciate what's going on with the Bitcoin network. So what we're seeing here is a transfer of funds from the hodlers back towards the newer money. And that indicates both an influx of new demand. It indicates that hodlers believe that they can actually take some profits off the table. Naturally, that will also be reflected in our profitability metrics over that longer term. But what we're seeing is that macro scale of transferring those funds back. So it's a bit of a combination metric, but that's the fundamental reality of what we're trying to look at. We've kind of reached that point where we hit a saturation of those old hands. And as the cycle goes, there is a natural gravity back towards the other direction. Now, the last thing we're gonna look at is also in that supply dynamics realm, 
Here we're basing this in the, in the supply in profit. Now, as you can imagine, when prices rise, all of the coins that were one cent below the current price are now in profit. We consider it to be an unrealized profit. What we're looking for here is that as price starts to move higher, you see more of those coins move back into a profit. Now, what we've seen recently is a very, very small price increase. Relatively speaking, we saw about 10% as we came off that 16,500. The first 10% rally that we had put over 13% of the coin supply back into a profit. So what does that mean? That means that between, I think it was around 16,500 and 18,200, that range, there's about 13% of the supply that has been capitulated by somebody and accumulated by somebody else. So that uptick in price, whilst relatively small, 10% price rally, we've seen a 13% jump in percent supply and profit. So what this model is looking at is over a 90-day period, do we have an uptrend in supply in profit? Now, what I really want to highlight here, note that over the course of the bull market, as the rally starts to move, we see more coins going into a profit. But note as we get to late stage bulls, this thing starts to trade sideways. Same here, we start to see it trade sideways. Price is still going up, but this model goes sideways. Even look at these 2013 peaks, they're not that much higher. What's going on? People through this course, this is the hodling phase. This is when hodlers are just enjoying the ride. So as the market gets to the all time high and all of the circulating supply is now in profit, which is why you get this flattening out of the curve, every single coin in the supply is by definition in profit, but during that process, the redistribution of coins from hodlers to these new buyers makes the market quite top heavy. And what happens is as you get the significant pullback that generally starts one of these bear markets, you get a very, very sharp and sensitive trend shift. This is showing that all the coins that were distributed through the course of this late stage bull, when you have the maximum euphoria and the maximum excitement, are immediately plunged into a loss. And we saw this here in May 2021, where a large and top heavy market was immediately flushed into a downtrend. And you can see that our signal turned off at that point almost immediately. We can see much the same event here at our November, October 2021 peak, a very sharp reversal as a top heavy market immediately moves into an unrealized loss. So this model will trigger a pink bar when over a 90 day period, we have an uptrend in overall coins in profit. So we are seeing that the more the price moves, more and more coins are going to profit and we're starting to head into that, you know, that hodl realm where essentially the hodlers for weathering the bear market, they start to get rewarded. So as you can see, all of these models are taking those four topics, pricing models, on-chain activity, network profitability, and supply dynamics, and distilling all of those down, two metrics per concept, and distilling them down into a very, very simple model, which is how many of those where both metrics, metrics are firing do we have? And the black curve will show you out of all eight, how many of those, between zero and 100%, how many of those are actually ticked up at the moment? So let's zoom in on our last two years to really see what's been going on. What we can see is that we have our first, both of our pricing models, as we discussed, both of our pricing models have now gone off. Now remember, we have to make sure that price actually stays above them because otherwise this will turn off again. So it's a very, very simple threshold to just help you understand how many of these things are on. We've seen some of the supply dynamics tick over. We've got both of our supply dynamics models going. We are seeing that transfer of wealth from the hodlers back to newer money. But remember, this is very, very early, very, very early in seeing these models actually firing off. You can see all through 2022, we saw very few of these. So really, it's just that first signal. We need to really pay more attention and just see if we get that confirmation. Because at the moment, we don't have on-chain activity firing, only our, not, our new address momentum. We do not have fee pressure yet. So that's another one to keep us grounded. And both of our profitability metrics. And you can actually see here, during the bear market, these profitability metrics were the only ones that went off. People took profits into these local peaks. So you can see that these concepts can be applied to many phases of the market. But in this structure, we're really looking at it purely from a bear market dynamic. But you can see how these concepts can be reapplied. So at the moment, we have a handful of signals firing off, but we do not yet have a very, very comprehensive 
suite of all these metrics. Let's look at our 2021 market. You can see 2019, all of these metrics started firing in April. So we are in, in terms of pricing, we've broken above the realized price models, the same as we did here in April, 2021, but we do not have the same level of confluence. So we are very early in watching this. It's just time to pay attention. We don't necessarily have all of that conviction just yet. You can see that it went dark blue, meaning all eight were firing off as we came into this semi-miniature -mini euphoric peak. It cooled off quite substantially. Note that the blue profitability metrics, this is people taking profits and putting in these local tops. But following the COVID event, we saw everything pick up. We saw our profitability pick up. We saw on-chain activity pick up. We saw our pricing models get cleared. And as we moved into that full-fledged euphoric bull, we saw the hodlers start spending their coins. So as you can see, we can really use this model to track all these different topics, break it into bite-sized chunks, understanding each one of the puzzle pieces, but trying to answer that question, are we recovering from a true Bitcoin bear? So thanks for tuning in for that session. As I mentioned before, you will find this dashboard in the description below. It is a new one that is designed for advanced and professional members. Um, do let me know your comments if you enjoyed this particular topic. And hopefully this tool can just give you that extra grounding anchor, both to learn more about on-chain analytics, understand the different topics, because we're going to break these into concepts over the course of this year. So help you take it bite-sized pieces, understand what is on-chain activity and what is it telling me and what is a good sign and what is a bad sign. This is our first step to trying to help you understand those different puzzle pieces, put them all together and make sure that you have that grounding anchor so that when all of the, the, the fun and the joy of markets, as this is all happening, you have a data-driven approach that you can really boil it down and understand what's going on to the best of your ability. As always, you can reach me in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.